In this video, I'm going to give you a guide to getting the best out of uh, DJI Mini 3 and other drones uh, when using AEB, or otherwise known as bracketed photography. Some of the uh, best photos you're going to see on Facebook groups like DJI Drone Photography use this method. Um, people talk about it all the time, you know, saying they've shot AEB, blah, blah, blah. And I think for some people it can be quite uh, quite new and interesting and, and, and difficult in some ways you know to get the right balance of of light and um and of, of, of shadow in the photo and get the best out of shots like this you know these nice sunset shots um so where do you start with it well first of all you need to be shooting aeb mode and choosing the right time of day uh, often um, sunrise or sunset is the best time of day uh, to get some nice colorful skies uh, choose the right composition and things like that and obviously setting your drone up in AEB mode and getting the exposure right okay so with simple drones like the uh, the mini series and even the air series you don't have control over your aperture all you've got is control over shutter speed and AEB sorry not AEB uh, what am I talking about you've got shutter speed and ISO and if you understand uh, exposure you'll know that you know shutter speed if you're shooting in low light, you can be tempted to uh, use a longer shutter to capture the light, all right? Well, what that can do though is, and I'll give you an example of, this is a shot I had taken the last couple of days, uh, and I did this AEB. If I'd have taken this with a really long shutter because of the low light, there's a good chance that I would have lost all the color here in these, in these um, illuminated things that are on display. And that's because as these are moving with the lights, if they're changing colour, if these LEDs are constantly changing colour while you've got a long shutter open, they'll end up just going white in the final exposure. So the alternative to using a long exposure is using a very short exposure. But then with a short exposure, although you might freeze that colour, you're not going to capture much light. So the way you have to get around that is by using high ISO. And again, I know this might sound complicated right now, but it's all going to make sense in a minute. If you use a really high ISO value, you're going to end up with lots of noise in your photo. Now, I've done a quick Google search to uh, demonstrate. If you don't know what noise is, it's nothing to do with anything you can hear uh, when we're talking about it with noise with photography. So I've just done a Google search for noisy photo, and you can see some examples here. So you see this one? I don't know how clearly this is going to come out on YouTube, but... Noise is like a really, because you've turned your sensi sensitivity of your, of your camera's sensor really high, you end up, you can capture fat light really quickly, but you end up with these really sort of dotty and, you know, texture almost to your photograph, which you've then got to try and get rid of when you're processing at the end. And just recently, I've been experimenting with a piece of software called DxO Pro Pure Raw. And before you think, oh, I'm just trying to promote it, I'm, I'm absolutely not. There's no... I've already checked, there's no way of getting anything free out of these guys apart from the trial. Um, so there's not, you know, I, I'm no way affiliated to this in, in any way, shape or form. If you want to go and buy this, you buy it and I get nothing out of it. Um, however, they do do a full free, uh, a full one month free trial, uh, which I'm currently using at the moment. And I'm just waiting for Black Friday to see if they do a reduction. And if, if they do, I'm going to buy it. And even if they don't, I'm going to buy it then anyway. I just don't want to buy it and then find out they reduced it for Black Friday. So, um, so yeah, you can get a full version of it, and I'm going to show you my workflow uh, that I'm using while I, while I demonstrate this, uh, while I try this out for myself. So last night I went out to the uh, River of Light Festival in Liverpool, and I took quite a lot of shots, all in AEB mode on my drone, and I deliberately shot them with a really quite a quite a fast frame rate, or a fast shutter uh, and a high ISO. Uh, and what the result is, I've got really some quite sharp images, but they were very noisy. And I've processed them using DxO Pure Raw, which I have got installed here as a demo, um, still, still in demo mode. I'm getting a free month out of them, like I say. As you can see, I've got 18 days left. The only limitation to it is you can only process 20 photos at a time. So I'll just open this up and uh, we'll come back to it in a moment. So first thing I did was dumped all the photos that I'd taken from the drone onto my computer. Okay, and I quickly dragged them all into Lightroom, 
which again, you can get this for nothing uh, as a trial. Uh, if you do want to buy Lightroom, it costs about £10 a month off Adobe. And if, again, if you wait for Black Friday, you might even get a better deal than that. Um, but I'll take you through, through the full process. This is the one I ended up with. But before I worked on it like this, what I did was quickly converted everything uh, using the automated photo merge. As you can see there, HDR merge. Okay. Um, just to see which ones I like the composition and the light of, first of all. Because what the, you see, the, the thing is with processing the images in DxO Pure Raw, it takes a little while. So what I didn't want to do was take all the noise out of them before I knew which ones I was going to use. So just to explain my workflow there. So first thing, dragged everything into uh, Lightroom, decided which ones I wanted to keep. And then, uh, like I say, I'm just going to go back to here. This is just to demonstrate again. So these are my, where are we? Here we go. These are the four raw images, sorry, five raw images straight off the drone. So you can see, I've got those like that. And you see, they're quite dark, aren't they? And you can see, let's just zoom in a little bit and you'll see just how noisy they are. And see all the dots in there? Okay. So this is after they've been processed in um, DxO Pure Raw. Uh, which has got a lot less noise now. There's still some there, but there's a lot less. And then, once they're processed, let's just hide that. So you, let's tell you what, I'll quickly demonstrate. If you want to, these are the ones straight off the drone. We drag them in straight like that. The, the good thing I like about this DxO Pure Raw, um, and I'll say there are there are other softwares available. Uh, there's one called uh, something Denoise, I forget what the other brand is. The other, I've, I've watched quite a few of these reviews of these softwares before. I've actually um, chosen one that I like. The other one, uh, and I forget exactly, uh, what's it called now? Topaz, isn't it? Topaz Denoise. I've got it on there. Again, this is just demo. Topaz Denoise has got a lot of options and sliders that you can move around. And whilst that might be interesting to play with, I wanted something that's just a lot more simple. I, didn't, I don't want to be messing around for a long time denoising things. And I've watched some reviews, and some people, some people that you know that have done the same process, just said they preferred this as a one-stop. It does a really, really good job, and you're not messing around with sliders all the time, thinking, "Oh, should I do a bit of this? Do a bit of that?" You just put them in there, click on process, and away you go. All right. I'm just going to choose um, to put them into the same folder in a, as DNG format again, which is raw format. Okay. In fact, I'm just going to save time. I'm not going to bother because I've already done it. There's no point in doing it again. So let's just quit that. These are the processed files, all right? So let's go back to Lightroom. And although I've already got this in here like that, let's go and just drag them all in again. So these are the process shots. Let's just drag them all in. And that goes like that. Okay, click on to add five photos. Uh, saying that these are duplicates. Yeah, I thought it might do something like that. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pause the video and process this and then do them again from scratch. Oh, I'll tell you what, let's do... No, cancel that. Cancel that. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just delete that altogether. And then I will go back and drag them in. Okay, let's do that. And then you can see the full workflow. So what I'm going to do is select all five photos and go photo merge, HDR merge. And as soon as this button lights up, I'm going to OK it. Actually, let's just go back a bit. I've just skipped a step there. Let's go again to photo merge, HDR merge. As you can see there, I've got auto, auto alignment and apply the auto settings. That's just the colour options so you've got somewhere as a base to start from and I'm taking the de-ghosting de down. De-ghosting can be um, when because you're taking five photos in quick succession if someone's running really fast for example you might have them in five different positions and it will try to then remove um, any so that you don't end up with five five of the same person in the same shot if you see what I mean. Uh, it will try to remove some of them so basically I have it turned right down though because I've found in the past it can actually really enhance the noise so let's just click on merge and we'll go from there. 
this should be should be pretty quick. It's only twelve megapixel. Um, obviously, the bigger your sensor on your camera, the more um, the longer it's going to take to process. But we can go in there now and start working on it. And you can see straight away that's straight off the bat. That is virtually, you know, you might think, oh, that's that's just great as it is. Um, but let's see. Some of the things I usually do on these is. You can really go overboard. I mean, you can really you can really push it with with, with when you're processing these and end up with some really psychedelic <laughs> looking um, looking images. But I usually just add a little bit of negative vignette just to darken the corners up. And this I'll show you the extremes of it. That's obviously a positive one, makes it white around the edges. Negative one makes it black around the edges. I don't like it do it too much. It looks like looking through a keyhole. But I take I usually take the corners down just a little bit just to bring more focus into the center. And also the image that I put onto Photoshop last night, as soon as I shared it, I thought, why did I crop it like that? I didn't like the way I cropped it. I think I probably would have preferred something like, I don't think there was any need for that skyscraper, the second one there. Probably should have come in. What I was trying to do was keep these reflections in here and not crop them out of the image. But I also didn't want to crop the bird out the top. And I also don't like making things square. So I was trying to keep the same proportions, if you see what I mean, but uh, also keep a little bit of sky and keep those reflections without. So maybe something like that would have been a better crop. Um, yeah, like I say, I mean, you can you can play around with these sliders here as well to your heart's content and make it really wacky and, you know, go crazy on the saturation and things like that and make it very... And I've, I've, I'm, I've been guilty of doing that in the past. I don't like doing it too much these days because I think you can go really over the top with it. But uh, I'm going to pull that back a bit to how it was because I think that's colourful enough. And maybe just go a little bit, just a little bit, something like that on the vibrance just to give it a little bit more yellow. These are quite yellow, these lights. I mean, as you see this building in the flesh. Oops, I can just notice I've ended up with a little white row of pixels on the right as well. Let's crop those out. So yeah, that's my workflow for um, HDR images, and um, what I would say is, I, I, I've, I've not recorded the actual screen of my um, controller when I'm when I'm actually taking the taking the photo, so I can't show you that. But what I try to do is just go just a tiny bit underexposed. So when you are adjusting your shutter speed and your ISO, I always try to aim personally just to be maybe half a stop. Or a third of a stop under under you know like a, a natural neutral exposure on the on, on the, on the um, there's a little guide isn't there I don't know what it's called unfortunately the um, the exposure guide that's on the controller app of the um, DJI thing so that's what I try to do and that's how I get these results and like I say the, the faster the shutter speed you can get you don't want to go crazy crazy fast you know and, and really. You need, you need to be up to, the, up to uh, you know, obviously capturing some light. Because um, obviously we're trying to, and I talk about doing this in, in, in low light, so, uh, you know, to get these nice effects of, of, of dark and light in the same photo. So you don't want to go too fast with your shutter, but, um, but yeah, once you, once you find a nice shutter that you're, you're happy with the speed of, get your ISO to the level where you're just a little bit underexposed. Because if you, if, you, if you do overexpose, you can't rescue it. But if you are underexposed you can always pull some detail out of the shadows uh, and I'll quickly demonstrate that here just in Lightroom if you see this slider here for shadows you look at the darker areas how you can see you can pull those back like that and rescue it but uh, anyway that's enough waffle for this video I will end it there and you can uh, go and download these uh, demos like I say and have a play um, to your heart's content as I say you can get uh, a full month from uh, from DXO.com for Pure Raw. If you want to buy it, it's about a hundred pounds, I think. 100, is it one hundred and fifteen, maybe? Yeah, one hundred and fifteen pounds, or you can buy it on Tick there for three eighty. Sorry, thirty eight pounds. And Adobe Lightroom is. Let's find out. Let's find the price view. I was checking this before. I think it's ten pounds a month. And you get Photoshop with it as well. Yeah, there you go. Uh, and you, and you, get a, you get a free trial as well. So there you go. 
Um, I don't make like a, I just say at the end of this video as well. I don't make many videos, but when I do, I try to go into depth. And, and um, if you if you want to like and subscribe to this channel, if I do ever make any more videos, you know you 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 might get an alert for them. Um, like I say, I don't do it very often, so you're not going to get bombarded by me if you do decide to subscribe. But there you go. Cheers.